balance in the cycle we need practice and we have to constantly adjust the handlebar and our form Balancing means you just ride on. That's it. You have to look forward, keep your body straight, and then you need practice. First of all, keep our cycle in balance. Then keep the handle in position. Then ride out. Balance in the cycle means. Maintain the center of gravity of the cycle and uh, our body. Center of gravity of our body in a straight line. As you just saw, some were uncertain and some were absolutely wrong in answering a simple question as to how one maintains the balance on a bicycle. Maintaining the center of gravity, controlling the handlebar were some of the answers. But these won't help the rider maintain the balance when the bicycle is not in motion. In fact, what helps the rider maintain the balance is the motion. This is why it is easy to balance on a bicycle which is in motion and nearly impossible when it stops. Here, it is the motion that is important, not the rider. Even without a rider, a bicycle can maintain balance as long as it is in motion. Why a bicycle? Even a single wheel maintains balance, then it is rolling. This is a feature common to all spinning or rotating bodies. In fact, there are two interesting features in all spinning bodies. One is known as the gyroscopic inertia and the other the precision. First, let us explore what the gyroscopic inertia is all about. A spinning top, a simple toy of children. When it is spinning, it maintains an upright position. When its speed decreases, it tumbles. Similar is the case of a rolling coin. It does not fall as long as it is rolling. That is because these bodies are rotating about a particular axis known as axis of rotation. And it is a tendency of a rotating body to keep the direction of the axis of rotation unchanged. This feature is called the gyroscopic inertia. Inertia is the tendency of a body to continue in its state of rest or of uniform motion. To change a given state, an external force is required. Force is required to move, to change the direction or even to stop. Likewise, gyroscopic inertia is the inertia possessed by a rotating or a spinning body. A force will be required to change its velocity or direction. The direction of its rotation is given by its axis. The direction of the axis remains unaltered in all spinning objects. When the top slows down, it begins to lose its gyroscopic inertia which was keeping its axis unchanged. Gyroscopic inertia can be demonstrated through a simple experiment. A record hung from a string can be swung back and forth in a smooth, even manner like a pendulum. But if the record is given a spin and then swung, the movement will not be smooth. Like this record, all spinning bodies will resist any force that tries to change its direction of axis of rotation. What prevents it from swinging smoothly is its gyroscopic inertia. It's the same gyroscopic inertia which helps a rider balance the bicycle. The rotating wheel gains gyroscopic inertia which keeps the wheel steady in the vertical position. It was French physicist Ron Foucault who explained the concept of the gyroscopic inertia in the 19th century. To demonstrate this principle, he devised an instrument and named it the gyroscope. 
the word gyre means rotation and scope means view. The device consists of a wheel called the rotor which is mounted on a support system. The support system consists of two circular frames. The frames and the wheel together can rotate in one, two and three mutually perpendicular planes. The frames permit the wheel to tilt freely in any direction and rotate about any axis when it is made to rotate. Even if the gyro is tilted or rotated, the wheel will keep pointing in the same direction because of its gyroscopic inertia. When the wheel is static, there is no gyroscopic inertia and so the wheel cannot maintain its position along the same direction. The magnitude of the inertia is proportional to the weight of the rotor and the distribution of the weight. It also increases with the velocity of rotation. The gyroscopic inertia can serve an important purpose of finding the direction. Instead of the magnetic needle, a gyroscope can be used as a sensitive element of a compass. Such a compass is called a gyro compass. Sailors have been using gyro compasses since early 20th century. Today, there are advanced versions of gyro compasses, but their basic structure is the same. In some versions, the rotor is set floating in a liquid medium through which electricity is supplied. It is rotated at a high speed of about 9,000 rotations per minute. The gyroscopes used in ships have extra mechanisms to make them not seeking. When the gyro is activated, the rotor will start rotating and its axis will gradually settle in the direction of the true north. In the display unit of the gyro compass, the needle indicates the course of the ship with respect to the true north. A repeater display unit of the gyro compass located in the steering section of the ship helps the crew navigate along the course towards the destination. Unlike an ordinary magnetic compass, a gyro compass is not affected by iron and other magnetic materials. Yet another feature of the gyro compass is that it can be interfaced with other navigational equipment such as the global positioning system. The gyro compass makes use of the ability of the gyroscope to maintain its axis in the same direction. But the gyroscope can maintain its axis even when it is tilted. This feature of the gyroscope is used in an instrument known as the artificial horizon which measures the tilt. The sphere of the instrument is attached to a gyroscope. The blue side of the sphere represents the sky. The black portion indicates the earth. The line separating the two represents the horizon. When the gyro is switched on, this line will remain parallel to the natural horizon. This helps the pilot to make out whether the aircraft is flying tilted or is pitched up or down. So this is all about gyroscopic inertia a principle that plays an important role in riding a bicycle, in navigating a ship and in cruising in the skies. In the next part, let us investigate 
a feature of rotating bodies called the precession.